Parkinson's is one of the most difficult diseases to diagnose and treat. But here at the Neurosciences Institute, a new biomarker could help speed up clinical trials and help patients before symptoms kick in. How significant is this for Parkinson's research and for patients? The biomarker for Parkinson's disease really changes how we are able to diagnose patients, but more importantly, how we're going to be able to do clinical trials and research in the future. What our study at Stanford showed is that not only can this biomarker accurately identify people with Parkinson's disease, but it can also identify people who don't have a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease, but have the underlying biology. And in the past, how were you hampered in terms of diagnosing Parkinson's disease? The only way to officially diagnose someone with Parkinson's disease, unfortunately, is after they died by having them donate their brain for research and looking under the microscope. The way we would try to approximate that in clinic is by looking at their symptoms. And what most patients would hear from their doctor is, I think this is Parkinson's disease, but with only time will we know for sure. And that's very unsatisfying for patients. How do you steer Parkinson's patients in the right direction or those who may have it. If you don't have any symptoms and you just have a family history or are concerned, we would only do that in the research setting. We have some data here from Stanford that shows that individuals with no clinical symptoms, but with the biomarker, did eventually develop those symptoms of Parkinson's disease. This is game changing in the field of Parkinson's disease. Up until now, we didn't have the ability to even conceptualize a clinical trial to prevent Parkinson's disease because the only people we could enroll are the ones that already had the symptoms. So this completely pivots our approach to actually being able to plan for a primary prevention clinical trial. And that gives me enormous hope, not just for my patients today, that we might have better therapies to slow their progression, but for my future patients that we might be able to find something that could actually prevent them from ever developing the symptoms of Parkinson's disease.